guys and welcome to another episode of thrift flippin i don't know why i did those hand movements okay um <laughs> As you guys know, I love Reformation just as much as the next social media hoe. Um, probably more. Probably like a little bit too much. I'll just let you soak in the beauty that is these pieces of clothing for a second, and then remind you that they cost like 178 fucking dollars. So today I'm gonna be trying to make some Reformation inspired designs from things that I found from the thrift store. Oh, and before we jump into it, today we have a special guest as well. Let me go grab her for you. This baby, a sewing machine. I finally got one thanks to a lovely, lovely subscriber. I've had this for around like two months and I have not learned to use it yet, but today is the day. Okay, so the first piece that we're transforming is this lovely linen dress. Oh, that's backwards. I got this at Council Thrift Stores, which is a chain of thrift stores in LA for $8. What drew me to this dress is that it already has kind of all the makings of a Reformation dress. It has these tortoiseshell buttons that are super trendy that I have on this dress as well. I also love the big ass pockets on this thing. You could probably fit not an iPad, but maybe like two Chipotle burritos in this pocket. However, in its current state, it's a bit sacktastic. That's a disgusting word. I mean, it looks like a potato sack is what I'm saying. So instead, I thought I would turn this into a two piece set. Honestly, this is one of the more complicated thrift flips that I've done. And it's been about a year since I've used a sewing machine. So I'm honestly not sure if this will work. I promise you I'm not being dramatic. I'm just unskilled. So let's get to the voiceover and I'll walk you through whatever the hell I end up doing with this. So to make this two piece, I started off by cutting the dress into two pieces, as one might expect. And because I'm a real adult now who actually hems her edges, it was time to call in our good friend, the sewing machine. Well, let's see how this works. Ooh. This does not seem right. Okay, this is not how my grandma's sewing machine worked. Oh. You know you have an old person hobby when the instructions are written this big on the page. This is like 34 point font for all those grandmas out there. Good thing my eyes are so young and healthy still. Is this the problem? All right, I think she's all threaded. Suppose let's just get her fired up and sewing. I will say that sewing machine took a little bit of getting used to, but I'll show you guys what the top looks like right now. The hem is not straight, it is by curious at best. Really, my craftsmanship is doing the least. Now for the skirt section, which is more of a flaccid tube right now, I wanted to bring in the waist, but I couldn't just sew directly down the sides of the skirt because that would cut off those pockets, which I wanted to keep. So instead I cut out a panel from the back. So the total waist of my dress would be around 27 inches and sewed a center seam right down the butt side of the dress. So I just finished sewing the skirt and I may or may not have fucked up a little bit. Um, let me just show you, it's pretty bad. Basically, my problem is that I forgot that my body isn't 27 inches the entire way down and I actually have hips. Um, sorry, it's kind of new to me. I just went through puberty about five years ago. So yeah, your girl forgot to put in some room for the booty. So luckily I still have some of the fabric left over that I cut off from the skirt. So out of that, I'm gonna cut a new triangle insert that'll hopefully fill in that nice big old crotch gap. Also, this could be a really useful way if you have a skirt that's too small for you that you could expand it a little bit. I don't know why you'd have the exact same fabric as the fabric your skirt is made out of lying around your house, but that is for you to figure out. I'm really just trying to rationalize my failure. Okay, let's fix this skirt. So to fix this, I'm using my handy dandy seam ripper, which I finally bothered to buy for like $4 from Joann's. You girls really moving up in the world. After Frankensteining my skirt back together with that new sexy butt triangle and trimming off the excess fabric on this hot mess of a raw edge, I finished it all off with a simple hem along the top of the skirt. With the skirt done and finally covering my entire crotch, we're definitely heading in the right direction, but the top was still a little loose for my taste. It kind of flared out weirdly in the back. So I brought it back to the sewing machine for what is essentially an incredibly thick, we're talking like three C's worth of thick, dart down the back and trimmed off the excess fabric. And here is how the two piece turned out. I will say the concept was a solid 10 out of 10. The actual execution was maybe two out of 10 at best. I think it looks cute as a set together, but honestly, I think they look even better and a little less like a nurse uniform when they're separate. That's honestly what's cool about the two piece though, is that I get more outfit options for like the $8 that I spent on this entire project. So I'm not mad at all. Next on the chopping block, we have this skirt. I got it for 
$5.49 at Goodwill. Right now, it's fine. It's just chilling, you know, a solid color, a plain design, not objectionable but I thought I could turn this into something a lot cuter. So the first thing I wanted to do was make the skirt a little bit more of a modern silhouette by taking a couple inches off the bottom hem. I tried on the skirt and folded it up to where I wanted the new hem to be to test it out and then marked that spot with a safety pin. Then I laid it down flat and cut across about an inch below that mark. To sew the new hem, we're gonna be doing an invisible stitch so that we won't see the stitches on the outside of the skirt, which will hopefully make it look a lot more polished. And also to be honest, I was just kind of triggered by my inability to sew a straight line on the first thrift flip. So to do an invisible stitch, I'm poking through the folded up part and then grabbing just the tiniest, tiniest single thread from the other side so that on the outside, it doesn't really look like there's a stitch at all. At least that's the goal. <laughs> so now it's looking like a much more flattering shape, but I still feel like it's a little bit plain. So I also bought this weird, <laughs> cardigan slash jacket thing. Um, you know, looks like something your grandma who collects cat statues would wear. No offense though to grandmas who collect cat statues, that's gonna be me in a good 60 years. But obviously this is not my style, not my color either. So I'm basically just gonna cut the buttons off of this and put them onto the skirt, which kind of breaks my heart because I feel so bad wasting this piece of clothing. But thrifting this was honestly cheaper than buying the buttons by themselves. And hopefully like at least I'm upcycling a little of this, so. Don't hate me. To sew the buttons on, I opted for a cream thread instead of a pink that matched the skirt because I really wanted that button details to stand out. And here's how the skirt turned out. Hopefully nobody stops to think about the fact that there's an entire row of buttons that's not actually attaching anything to anything like buttons are supposed to. But other than that, I think it looks quite cute and on trend and definitely a little bit more of a statement than the original plain skirt. And lastly, we have this pale yellow dress. For some reason, I'm going through a yellow phase right now and I thought this color was delightful. So again, this dress is a little bit large on me and a little bit shapeless. And especially since it's a longer length, I feel like it's really easy for me to look kind of drowned in the fabric, look a little bit like old fashioned prairie girl, but not in a cute way, you know? So to bring in the waist and add a little more detail to the dress, I'm gonna be making this corset detail. I'm basically crisscrossing some satin ribbon across the back of the dress and attaching it using some matching thread. So to do that, I'm creating a tiny little loop at the side of the dress with the thread and tightening it just enough so that the ribbon is attached but it can still move around so at the end I'll be able to tighten and loosen the corset thingy. What can I, do? I continued making those little loops all the way down the dress, spacing out my stitches around two inches apart vertically. Also because I'm scandalous, I wanted to change up this more conservative neckline. So I flipped the dress inside out and then inside out again, like inside out section, so that I could re-sew the line where the neckline was attached to the lining. I sewed a new straight neckline, which was a lot more similar to stuff that I'd seen on Reformation dresses and something that I just love personally. After trimming out the excess, it was looking like this. I still wanted to iron out the seam a little bit so that it laid more flat, but I'm a college student, so I don't actually own an iron. So a handy life hack for you is that you can actually just use a random object. I'm using a big stack of paper, you can use a textbook, you can use the crushing weight of your parents' expectations, you know, whichever is heaviest, and just leave it on top overnight to press those seams flat. After a good night of pseudo ironing, here's how it turned out. I was actually so happy with how this turned out and so proud of this dress that I bothered to go outside and prance around in front of a stranger's house to show it off. Also, please ignore how many leaves are on my butt in this shot. I was sitting on the pavement posing dramatically like two seconds earlier and I forgot that they were there. So yeah, so proud of how this turned out and I'm just gonna go ahead and say what we've been waiting for me to say this entire video, which is that it reminds me of something from Reformation. All right, guys, and that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I know this video was a bit struggle at the beginning, but we got through it and I'm really happy with how everything turned out, especially this dress. I literally feel like a fairy tale princess. I'm so happy with it. Also, let me know if you guys want me to do a certain thrift flip on like a certain item from the thrift store or with a certain theme or season in mind. Uh, let me know in the comments below. So thank you again so much for watching and I will see you guys next week. Thank you.